Saturday night, my youngest was on a date with this boy, and I had not met him. And I had a buddy of mine that was there, and I see on Life 360 that she's pulling up in the neighborhood. And I said, come on. I said, we got we to gotta mess with this guy a little bit. <laughs> Hannah, go inside. Did you put your arm around her? No, sir. No, sir. I said, did you kiss her? No, sir. No, sir. Oh, my daughter's still not talking to me. I yeah. think mine's actually scared to bring one home. Yeah, yeah. I would be too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The sound of that tractor means it's time for us to go to work. You're listening to the Give Us the Dirt podcast powered by Hoopa Grading Company. My name is Brandon. This is Bam Bam. And we are your host. So in, the, in today's episode, we are pumped to have Keith Petker, the chairman and CEO of Petker Construction, with us today. Keith began his career as a project engineer slash estimator at Baker Contracting before taking on the role of VP of pre-construction in the family business in 2001. Over the past 22 years, Keith has been instrumental in the phenomenal growth and success of Pecker Construction, helping to build it into a nationally renowned construction enterprise known for its unparalleled customer-focused construction services. What sets Keith apart isn't just his business acumen, but his unwavering commitment to servant leadership principles. His leadership philosophy emphasizes putting the needs of others first, fostering a culture of collaboration, nurturing relationships, and empowering every member of his team to thrive. Keith is more than just a construction titan. Oh, how about that? Wow. Construction titan. Holy cow. Outside the office, I need you'll that find bio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> outside the office, you'll find him enjoying time with family, friends, taking on the role of grill master, and soaking in the great outdoors through camping, boating, and hiking. Get ready to uncover the secrets behind his success and learn how his unique blend of leadership, passion, and zest for life continues to shape the landscape of the construction industry. Welcome, Keith. Thank how about you. that intro? Yeah, that's that's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Appreciate it's it. It's good to have you. Yeah. So th- you are no stranger to the podcast game. I heard this is you've you've been. This will be my fourth. Yeah. You yeah, enjoy so doing them? I love it. Love it. Um, first one, uh, you know, was with my dad. Um, uh, we did it uh, with KMLX Radio. Um, uh, they had a podcast for an afternoon, uh, uh, the Business of Family Business podcast, and. And, uh, and then, um, I've done two here while in Charlotte and then this will be my fourth. So, well, we, yeah. we are grateful. So. I imagine you have to do that for being the, I mean, you're the CEO, you gotta, you gotta go talk. You well, gotta you know, be the face yeah, of the organization. It's all about it. You know I mean? It's, uh, um, everybody's got different hats in life and, and you gotta accept the one that, the one that God gave you. So. I would love yeah. to hear the one with you and your dad. Is that is that still is oh, yeah. that it's, out there? It's out there. Yeah, I, yeah. I have to get that. A, one. Yeah, I'd love to hear that one. Podcast. Yeah. How long ago was that? That would have been in twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen. One of the okay. two. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And dad is still with us, or uh, he, passed he passed away. Passed. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah, July seventeenth of twenty twenty one. So, okay. yeah, yeah, he was, uh, he was our leader our mentor and yep. and kind of our guiding light and still our guardian angel today so absolutely yeah. so, i bet that uh, episode that, that podcast is pretty special it is yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 it's tough to listen to but uh i'm sure, uh, yeah. I'm <laughs> sure. It is, it, it's a good podcast well we you know so our research department gave us a great intro here but we're going to go a little deeper mm-hmm. and we're going to ask you to um we want our, our listeners to really know who Keith Pecker is. So we're going to play a little game called This or That, and you okay. just answer quickly. You tell us which one. Um, easy. Uh, coffee or energy drinks? Coffee. Beach or mountains? It's a toss-up. Probably beach. I, I, I enjoy the I enjoy boating and, and, uh, and all that stuff, but I also enjoy the mountains too. So. Well, you're in the right place. I'm in the right place. You're in yeah. the right place yeah. for that. How about call or text? Uh, definitely call. Yeah. I like that in-person interaction. What about you, Bam Bam? Are you a caller or a texter? I like call. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Yep. Does that make yeah. us old school? <laughs> I think so, yeah. It does? Wow. Yeah, definitely. Scrolling or reading? Uh, read. reading. Yeah. Monday meetings or Friday meetings? Uh, probably Monday. Um, Friday, I, you know, I like to get caught up on stuff before yep. the weekend, and if I can leave early... You know, try to leave early. There so. should be a rule against Friday meeting. <laughs> they should. We yeah, should absolutely. add that policy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Creative or logical? Um, probably more creative. Yeah, I would say more creative. Introvert or extrovert? 
extrovert. Yeah. Brutally honest or indirect? Um, depends on who I'm talking to, but um, I'll I'll try to be more indirect with yeah. people. You know, I um, I don't like to offend anybody, but if, if I do feel like you know someone's not getting it, then I will be pretty direct with them. So. Hard love. Yeah, hard it's life. hard love. Yeah, hard. I mean, you're more yeah. direct, aren't you? You're like a wrecking ball. <laughs> I'm, I'm direct. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. And and that's okay. Yeah. You know, uh, morning person or night owl? Probably a night owl. Yeah, definitely a night owl. Wow. Actually, so. Taylor Swift or Foo Fighters? Foo Fighters, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a big okay. fan of Taylor Swift, but. Sorry. Oh, you Sorry, have Caroline. you just made six hundred million <laughs> enemies right there. Yeah. <laughs> and one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've, I got s- a, I've got a lot of people around me that love Taylor Swift, but yeah. I don't know. I just can't get on that bandwagon. Uh, so. I'm yeah. beside you, bro. <laughs> Not, look, you're it's not going to get bad. me to say anything bad about Taylor Swift. <laughs> I know, I'm not you falling for that. You're closest to her over there. All right. <laughs> Ice bath or sauna? Um, probably a sauna. Sauna. Yeah. Have you done the ice bath thing? I've done some polar plunges in my pool, and I love them. You know, so I do love them. So, have you done it yet? Negative. Yeah. No, sir. Uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> done some polar plunges at you know forty some degrees in, in the pool uh, over the winter. That's brutal. Yeah. That's brutal. Um, in your car, are you listening to music or podcast? Um, it's a toss right. up. Uh, sometimes I'll listen to uh, uh, music. You know, I might listen to jazz or something like that, or our uh, uh, talk radio, yeah. So, can we can we insert give us the dirt podcast right there? That yeah, we'll edit over that and just he's gonna say all I listen to is the give us the dirt, <laughs> give us the dirt podcast. <laughs> Bring it to me. Let's uh, do it. All right, Let's personal it. maid or personal chef? Uh, personal chef. Yeah. yeah. Personal chef. 100%. Yeah. You need a maid. Yeah, I need money. <laughs> I need money. I'll uh, cook. Just give yeah. me the money. Oh, you did great with that. Thank yeah. you. That was no good. Problem. That was no that was that was easy. That was easy. Yeah. Um. So you are. Tell us where you're originally from, Keith. So I'm originally from uh, Breeze, Illinois, which is uh, just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, so, excuse me, Southern Missouri or Southern Illinois, um, farm uh, farmland and lots of cornfields and and stuff so um yeah so my you know my family you know is a lot of a lot of farmers and you know my dad you know my dad's family and and my mom's family are big big farmers in southern illinois so yeah did you grow up farming no i did not no i grew up in construction dad uh uh, when dad came back from uh, vietnam uh he was uh you know the one thing that he knew that he didn't want to do was go back to work for the family farm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so dad was one of, uh, 10 siblings and, and, you know, wow. um, so he, uh, didn't, uh, uh, ended up going into the trades, into the, into the carpentry trades and kind of followed his older brother, Dan's footsteps into the carpentry trades. And then, um, so yeah, so I grew up in construction. Uh, uh, I'm a 77 model. Um, dad, um, uh, graduated from the carpentry school in June of 77. Um, my brother Kevin's a 74 model and, uh, yeah. So he came back from Vietnam and, and came went back to from school Vietnam and, um, in March of 72 and, uh, didn't know what he wanted to do, but went into the, uh, into the carpentry apprenticeship school and, and then, uh, in the late 70s, after he graduated um, as a journeyman carpenter, um, he went to uh, a community college and got uh, um, took some courses there for um, you know more business courses and stuff like that, accounting so and stuff. Did so. his did his siblings were they part of the business at that time? Were they were so? They dad started or? the business in 1980. Started Petker Building Company in 1980, um, and then he incorporated it as Petker Construction Company in 82. Um, and in the 80s, uh, Dad had, uh, let's see, my Uncle Dan, my Uncle Stan, and my Uncle Bernie involved 
in business. And then uh, on my mom's side, my Uncle Larry was also involved um, on the estimating side. And What and were they then, building at that? So in the early 80s, um, let's see, in 82, they started building um, these modular uh, buildings uh, for uh, uh, Scott Air Force Base, which was a the big Air Force Base there. And these modular buildings were for... It could be for dorms. It could be for offices, but um, you know he uh, he's seen that that the general contractors um, they were outsourcing the modular component and they were just you know basically farming that out. And so um, he built a uh, um, a shed and then bought an old uh, uh, flatbed trailer and. Um, and then uh, started building these uh, these modular buildings, and he did that for about four years, and then and then he would just load them up and, and ship them out to uh, to the base, and he did that you know for four years, and then in '86 um, he made a uh, he drove to Bentonville, Arkansas, and uh, made a pitch at one of Walmart's uh, uh, contractor outreach events. He he got you know probably five minutes with somebody and uh, um, made a pitch to do business with Walmart. Wow! And <laughs> that was a game so, changer. So that was a game changer. So so we grew with Walmart um, in the in the eighties and nineties and and even today. We're we're actually uh, I think we're we're the longest standing relationship with Walmart um, across all of their vendor relationships. I think so. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you mentioned oh. uh, I listened to one of your podcasts, by the way. Okay. Cheated a little bit. <laughs> you did homework. I did. I yeah. did homework. Okay. And, and you were you talked about building relationships, yeah. and that was one of the things that that stuck out to me about you and your company, yeah. uh, about how y'all build relationships. You mm-hmm. didn't mention building buildings first. You mentioned those right. relationships, and that's important to you. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, – uh, so when – when we hire people, um, it's really easy to sever a relationship. It's much, much more difficult to grow it. And so, you know, we try to, we try to find people that are willing to, um, look at, look at an issue, um, not necessarily short side, uh, short sightedness. What's the best interest for Petker construction today or tomorrow, you know, are, are for this project um, and, and instead look at that issue and, and say, okay, what's the best interest for Petker Construction long-term for that relationship? How do we grow it? Are we, when we decide on this issue, are we growing the relationship? Are we going to sever the relationship? You know, there's no in-between. So, um, and, and you can usually solve a lot of issues you know, if, if you look at it from that lens. So. I love that perspective. And I, I want to come back to that because that's a huge piece of the culture that it sounds like your dad was uh, created and you've, you've yeah. carried on, you and your siblings have carried on. Yeah. Is that something that you remember? Actually, let's go back. So that in the eighties, your dad's building the company. Yeah. What do you remember from that time? You said, you know, you, you didn't remember growing up farming. That was, that was before yeah, you, so, you came along. Uh, so, so dad had us uh, involved in, um, uh, we would do small equipment repair work, oil changes. Uh, we would clean concrete farms. Um, we would, uh, empty trash cans. How old are you at um, this time? Um, is the department of labor listening or <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, but, uh, you, you know, I started pretty young, probably emptying trash cans. I was probably, uh, um, let's see, I was 77 model i was probably six by the time i started emptying trash cans yeah, that um, was job number one yeah <laughs> so yep. and then kind of grew grew into uh um sweeping shop floors um and and then uh, uh cleaning concrete farms um fixing extension cords that that were split and uh um uh, oil changes on small equipment um, you know, compressors and stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And then, you know, by the time I was, you know, you got to keep in mind that dad grew up farming. And so, you know, 
farm life, you were driving tractors, you were driving trucks um, on the family farm probably by the time you were 10 or mm-hmm. bet- sometime between 10 and 12. Yeah. And so by the time I was 12, you know, I was driving vehicle, company vehicles to job sites, you know, with trailers. So, um, <laughs> you know, so it so was, uh, <clears throat> uh, probably shouldn't have been doing that, but, uh, that's, that's know, the way it goes. It was, yeah, it was uh, a different time. And, and usually, times have changed you know, usually, that. uh, not too far away, you yeah. know, um, but you know, at so the end of the day, as you were doing this, did yeah. you always, even as a, as a, uh, kid, did you think this, this is what I'm going to do? I love no, this never, work. I want to be in the yeah. family business. No, never. No. And dad really didn't, dad really did not want any of us, uh, in, in construction, you know, he, uh, and if, if we wanted to get in, into the business, um, he wanted us to, to do that on our own accord at our own time. And, and so, you know, he kind of, he always thought the, the world of architects, you know, he thought, you know, Boy, if you could be an architect, wouldn't that be something? And, Why do you think he uh, didn't want you in construction? Um, you know, it's it was pretty it was pretty tough. It's you know you got to think about it. When Dad started in '82, um, interest rates were 17, 18 um, percent. He uh, he was not wealthy um, by any stretch of the imagination. You know, um, most of his employees were making more money than he was in the early eighties because he didn't draw, he did not draw up a paycheck the first two years. So we were living on uh, one income and rental income from, from a, uh, a condo that, that dad had built. So, so we lived in on one side of the condo and then he rented out the other in other condo or other side. And then, uh, um, our duplex, I mean, duplex and, uh, um, so, so he got eighty six hundred dollars a year from you know uh, from the rental of that other side of the duplex, and then uh, and then in eighty two, uh, eighty two was the first year that he he drew a fifteen thousand dollar distribution in eighty two. So it was tough. Three years later, yeah, yeah mm, it was almost. tough. <clears throat> yeah, it was tough. So you know and. Th- Oh, and that is, he he wanted you. He wanted something better yeah, for you at yeah. that time. And at the, at that time, construction um, it, was a, it was a very hard way to yeah. make a living. And he was having to start yeah. from scratch. He was. Yeah. He was starting from nothing. Right. Started and building from nothing that. And, and building it. And uh, so he wanted you to go to school. He wanted become. yes. He wanted me to go to to school. And I did go to school. I went to construction management. He, um, and and my brother Ryan followed in in uh, in those footsteps too. And went to const- through construction management with an emphasis on, on business. Um, you know, I mean, uh, I tell people all the time, I probably should have went to school for either psychology or, or to be a lawyer you know, <laughs> because I review a lot of contracts and I'm always you know, going back to counseling and yep. psychology and, you know, um, so anyways, not that I don't use my construction degree, but it's it's got me where it, where I am now. But right. you know, um, it's just a different emphasis in in life. You it know? is so, and that leadership uh, role. It's it yeah. is people. So it is people, and 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 trying to figure out how you can uh, how how you can build them up and and help them uh, support them whenever they're down. Yeah. So so when did you make the decision you wanted to go back into the business? Well, um, let's see. Um, after I graduated uh, from SIUE, um, yeah, um, uh, during college, I was interning with Baker Concrete uh, in, uh, in the summers. And then uh, 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 I was fortunate to uh, get hired on with them out of their Houston regional office. Um, I got hired on with them and then... Um, at that time, their Rocky Mount, their Rocky Mountain Mountain office reported to Houston, so um, I could go to, uh, I could stay in Houston, I could go to the Bahamas, or I could go to um, basically Denver at that time. And they were building the uh, the Mile High Stadium at that time. Um, so ended up going to Denver, and then I was only on that job for maybe two weeks, and then uh, ended up getting transferred to Colorado Springs. Or a, uh, uh, they were building a microchip processing plant for uh, uh, Intel at that time, 
And then um, I was on that job, um, and but I was always keeping in touch with what was going on in the family business, and um, they were they were struggling. Yeah. And um, Dad was a great leader, but um, he put a lot of trust in people, and um, you know, uh, and if uh, if somebody was sitting across the table from him. And if they had their construction management degree or their or, or any kind of degree, then he felt like they were smarter than him, mm. you know. And 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 uh, more than likely, um, that was totally not the case. But that's how he felt, you know, that uh, that they were smarter than he was. And um, so he he put a lot of faith in people, and and uh, um, we were not living by. We were not doing business the way that, uh, in terms of that middle management level, the way that um, Dad started the business, and doing doing some, um, just doing some doing some some things that we should not be doing as a company, and and you can only do that for so long, you know, before it catches up to you. And so, you know, I came back to work for Dad in two thousand and two. And then, uh, in Illinois, in, yeah, in Illinois. And <clears throat> we, uh, took a huge pay cut from, you know, where I was at, um, you know, I get this nice job with, with Baker and, you know, it's paying well, you know, and then took a pretty huge pay cut. Um, even, even a larger pay cut than, uh, uh, than coming right out of college, so uh, because you know the company just could not afford, you know, um, to take on it, uh, any anybody, and and so, but um, so it came back to work for Dad, and um, we were hemorrhaging as a company. Um, we were, you know, by two thousand three, um, we were, we had maybe three to six months worth of cash, and we had. Uh, uh, we lost our bonding capacity, lost our banking relationship. Um, we fired our entire accounting department. Uh, my sister Kimberly, who's going to college at that time, uh, uh, stepped in and and helped Dad with the accounting. Um, we fired our project management department, um, and uh, and then my brother Ryan, um, who was uh, um, on his last year of schooling at SIUE became the project manager. We, we, we kept our, our field operations team and we kept most of our estimating department. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. <laughs> like it was a fun time. Right? <laughs> it was, it was challenging and stuff. I mean, uh, you, but, there uh, you are, you've got this great job. You mentioned yeah. that you got this great yeah. job. Things are going well for you. You're moving yeah. up and, yeah. um, and then, you go back to the family business, take a huge pay cut, add a yeah. bunch of stress, yeah. <laughs> have to fire a bunch of people. And at yeah. the, so you're working, you mentioned a couple of your siblings are in the business, Ryan and Kimberly. Uh, Ryan and Kimberly are still time. there yeah. now? Yes. Yeah. So my brother Ryan is president <clears throat> of the firm. My sister Kimberly is chief financial officer and um, executive vice president. And then uh, my older brother, Kevin, came came in and uh, maybe 2006, 2007. At that time, he was a uh, sales representative for a construction supply company um, in in St. Louis, and would call on folks like yourself, and you know, uh, to, uh, very very good salesperson. So, but now he's vice president of business development for us. So. <laughs> so, it's four of you. In the yeah, Did yeah. y'all draw straws for the CEO no, position? No, no, no. Arm wrestle. Uh, now there was uh, everybody just kind of fell into their lane. Every, everybody, fortunately for us, uh, we had a really strong secession planning, um, and and so you know, Dad was, you know, it might have been that military background, uh, but uh, he was a master planner, and and so uh, um, did a lot of planning on secession, and you know, he would, uh, you know, he would tell us, you know. Be like uh, one day, you know, you're gonna wake up and the proverbial bus is gonna hit me, 
and you all be running the company. And that's exactly what happened. Um, you know, he, uh, he drowned from a drowning accident on a Saturday and, and, and we, uh, we had to schedule a, uh, a stockholders meeting on that Sunday in order to, in order to get a board of directors to, wow. mm. yeah. So, um, so that's fun stuff. Oh but, my goodness. Um, yeah. But well, hats uh, off to him though, for, yeah, for he, uh, having a plan. Yeah. He, and, he, had, he had a for plan, being prepared. you know, he, and, he, uh, he prepared, um, not, not just in planning, his estate, you know, a lot of people talk about planning your estate and planning your trust and your will, and, um, but um, planning what would ha- what is going to happen, you know, and and, uh, and 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 going through that process, and then um, you know he explained that process um, to our bonding company, you know, what would happen in the event of the proverbial bus hitting him. He explained it to our banking relationships. What's going to happen um, when the proverbial bus hits him? And and so that so, is rare. Yeah, that so, is rare. You don't see a lot of yeah. that. Is that something that you have tried to carry on? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, you know we we've gotten into strategic planning and and always looking at that secession plan and making sure that that, that uh, is, is always there. But um, I would I uh, I would never never want anybody to go through you know what uh what my family went through but um i tell you it's um we've grown you know we've grown together because of it and uh and um i think uh um, we enjoy life because of it you know yeah Um, we we enjoy the fact that life's short and and you don't get uh you know it's it's not forever you know so my dad loved to uh, entertain, you know, and, and so he, uh, um, if he asked you to go to dinner, it was not an hour long dinner. It was, it, it was a night. It was a four hour dinner, and and restaurants would stay open for him because they loved him, um, and uh, so it was a long night, you know. And so, um, you know, we uh, we would we would come back from Charlotte back into St. Louis and. Di- course dad would pick us up at the airport and uh and he'd be like by the way i've got reservations for us at such and such steakhouse tonight at uh, seven o'clock and i can remember saying uh dad we really don't have time for that and he said but i've already made the reservations yeah that wasn't a, that was not a question <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going. So, yeah. yeah so okay dad yeah. so so and, and i'll tell you what it, um sounds like a very special man yeah, very special. Man. I'd love to have more of those reservations. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm sure. But, yeah. Well, so, it's, so for those that are listening that may not have that haven't heard of Pecker Construction, give us give us the thirty second elevator pitch on Pecker Construction. What do you do? Well, uh, let's see. So we're um, licensed in twenty eight states. Um, we're in the Midwest and the Southeast. Um, and those states are are all relationship growth. In other words, we don't we don't go we don't expand into an area, but for our relationship needs, you know. So if so if we've got a relationship that wants us to um, to go out with them, uh, then I'll, I'll go through the process and see what it takes to, you know, um, uh, to move forward in that direction. But um, that's that's how we gr- have grown as a company, and then and then uh, we value relationships up and down the supply chain and um you know we're we're always trying to do stuff that uh um you know to improve the lives of our our uh trade contractors to improve the live lives of our uh employees and and all the tradesmen and women out there um um you know it could be uh well like right now we're we're trying to we're trying to go through some streamlining processes on payment, and and maybe maybe we can pick up eight to eight to ten days in our average turnaround time for getting our our contractors paid. Well, that's a big deal, you know. It's eight, big deal. you know, yeah. if if we can pick up, uh, you know, eight days. Heck, if we can pick up a week, that's a big deal, you know. And 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 so we're we're always trying to improve that process and. And and we stumble, you know. But uh, you know, we, what's the we size stumble. of Pecker Construction today? 
So Petker, so there's four companies involved. Um, Petker Construction is the only company that's out here. Um, Petker Construction is roughly 400 employees, um, and uh, uh, construction management, design, build services um, in the vertical space. Um, Petker Industrial is um, a utility <coughs> infrastructure company um, that does uh, transmission and distribution on the, on the electric grid, and and then excuse me, also renewable energy projects. Um, you know, the hope would be to expand that out to the southeast, but that does take uh, um, a larger capital equipment um, um, expense, you know, uh, getting, getting all, that, uh, all that out. Um, and then Petker Leasing and Supplies, an equipment asset holding company that supports uh, the self-perform arm of both Petker Construction and Petker Industrial. <coughs> So um, if we if we were to bring Petker Industrial, we would, Petker Leasing and Supply would come wow. with it, and then Petker Enterprises is a land holding development firm, predominantly in the uh, in the senior living space. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You, and I mean, you, and you are CEO over all of that. So I'm uh, I'm CEO of Petker uh, Construction. <clears throat> My sister Kimberly owns. Uh, Petker Industrial, okay. um, uh, and then uh, I'm managing. I'm, I'm a managing member of Petker Leasing and Supply and uh, Petker Enterprises. So, so, yeah. so you don't have a lot to do. <laughs> You've got a lot of free time. <laughs> All kinds of free time. Yeah. How, yeah. How'd you get to Charlotte? Uh, so in 2016 and 2017, we were going through st- uh, strategic planning. And um, we were uh, uh, we were already kind of in the southeast. We had at that time we had a few people in Columbia living in Columbia, South Carolina, working for us. We had one guy in Fayetteville, um, and then one guy here in Charlotte. And um, and then uh, so going through that strategic planning. Um, we realized that uh, our a lot of our um, relationships, developer relationships, especially on the industrial side, were allocating significant capital, and on the retail side actually, but we're allocating significant capital to southeast expansion over the next thirty to fifty years, and and then uh, on top of that, with the growth of the southeast um, construction. Um, uh, market, um, you know, we really felt like if we didn't establish an office in the Southeast somewhere Mm -hmm. that we would lose, we would, there was no way that we would, we would retain the individuals that we had. So, so kind of twofold one, um, to service the relationships, the national relationships that we had at that time, and then also to retain employees. And so, so we shortlisted six, uh, six uh, uh, cities in um, 2018, Atlanta, um, Charlotte, uh, Raleigh, um, Greenville, Spartanburg, Columbia, South Carolina, and Charleston, those six, and ended up selecting Charlotte. Charlotte was centrally located to all the market sectors that, that, that we provide, um, easy commute back and forth to St. Louis with the airport and then at that time um the uh charlotte chamber of commerce and it's even more today but i think at that time the charlotte chamber of commerce there was right around a hundred families moving a week moving into the the charlotte uh um economic region Mm -hmm. so i think it's quite a bit more now but um yeah so, and this is home for you now. This You're is here. Home. Yeah, this is home. So you gotten adjusted to the Carolina. Oh, I love it. Love. Have I you absolutely um, love it? And um, do you? Sh- can you speak fluent? Bam, bam. Yeah. <laughs> Not fluent. Uh, although my uh, my five year old son, I think he probably can. Good, good, yeah. <laughs> you hang around me. I'll, yeah. I'll get you there. There you go. Yeah, there hey, you go. Keith, you've got yeah. a very unique last name. Do you ever find that people struggle? to say your last name uh oh yeah yeah and and it's 
it's not a big deal to me. How, you just kind of go stand, with so, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We, but, we've been yeah. back and forth. We've been practicing. Yeah. I mean, Caroline okay. worked hard yeah. to make sure that we got it right because okay. I mean, we, it's our show, right? We got to right. make sure that we're doing it. But we actually wanted to put this to the test. Okay. So we um, we okay. went out to what we were on location today. Okay. Rose. And let's see. I'm gonna pull this video for you, and we wanted to ask people to pronounce this name i'm chris with the give us the dirt podcast and today we are going to lowe's and see if people off the street can pronounce the name petker construction so how do you <laughs> think it's pronounced Podiker. potker construction um Podiker construction Podiker. <laughs> construction i don't know <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> all of them are right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've heard yeah. all of those before, oh, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So so uh, in Germany, the O is silent. So the O is silent. There's, a, there's two dots above the, uh, ab- above the O, and, and so it's pronounced Petka. 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 Yeah. In Germany, so you don't even so. do the R. The Petka. Yeah. So, but yeah, them uh, two yeah. dots means you don't yeah. say it. So when we when we talked about doing this idea, he said, "Do you want me to run around and ask people <laughs> here at Hoopa?" I said, "No, we should actually know how to say the name. Yeah. This yeah. is a client of ours, so we no need worries. to make sure it's we know good. how to say it." But um, it's all good. Yeah. So. So I want to I want to talk about something um, else. There's a, the, Bam Bam mentioned it earlier. You guys have an amazing culture over at Pecker Construction. You are known for your culture, and culture is almost always a reflection of leadership. You've you've yeah. given credit to your dad, and and I I know you, of you well enough to know that you are very humble and and don't like to take a lot of that credit. But obviously, you've been very instrumental in creating that culture. Um, we you know, talking to people and listening to uh, your philosophy on leadership style, that plays into it too. Servant mm-hmm. leadership, empowering your team members, allowing them to be a part of the the solution and the success of the company. Yeah. Uh, that's that's all part of that culture that's made you guys successful. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, you know, uh, there's a good book. Uh, Stephen Covey uh, just wrote a good book called Tr- uh, Trust and Inspire. And you know, so how do you how do you get from uh, in construction? We're very control oriented people. You know, um, you don't want to go up to a, a job site and the superintendent's not in control. That's not a good thing. Uh, but um, as an organization, um, you know, how do you how do you move some of that? Um, you know, from from control to engagement, and then and then the, the next. The next approach is trust and inspire, and, and and so that's which is tricky. And you, you it, talked about your dad trust. had a hard time with that too. Mm-hmm. That trust yeah. element, and especially in the world that we live in, yeah. where you yeah. ha- are having to deal with lawyers all day long. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that's so a tricky spot. But you have been um, you've been very intentional about relationships, as Bam yeah. Bam talked about earlier, mm-hmm. and even uh, with with us. I can say that in our experience with Petker Construction and all of your team, we've never been treated like a sub. We've always been yeah. treated like a partner. Absolutely. And I that mean, concept of yeah. building those relationships, you, you said at the very beginning, it's a long-term uh, perspective on it. It is. It's, yeah. it's you yeah. teaching your team to, to look at every situation through the lens of your partners, too. Look at this. Are yeah. you severing? The relationship or are you growing the relationship yeah yeah uh you know so uh you know kind of go gets back to life is short you know and so uh so live by the golden rule you know uh, treat others as you, as you would want to be treated and you know back in 2003 2004 when we were going through this um you know this hemorrhaging as a company um i was on the on the on the deck you know, talking to dad and, and I, and I asked him, I said, you know, dad, how are you sleeping at night? You know, because he built this company and, and I said, we're going to have to declare bankruptcy. And, and he looked at me, he said, we're not going to declare bankruptcy. Um, I'm, I'm just happy, uh, to help walk you kids through this. Um, and, uh, he said, we still have arms, we still have legs, 
we've got a functioning mind, we can function as a human being in society, we'll be fine. So, wow, <laughs> wow. so pretty uh, cool. Yeah. So anyways, but. well, the value in this business, especially the value of those relationships is yeah. paramount. It is. And, and, it is. and yeah. doing that. And I know you, your company is very good at Brian McMain is here is he's as good as anybody I've ever seen about yeah. understanding that it's not about winning the battle. No, you, absolutely not. You want to, you want to yeah. come alongside of your partners and be a partner through it all. Right. Exactly. And having that long-term perspective. That's right. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's important. Well, let me, let me ask you this, because this is the give us a dirt podcast we're, okay. we're, you know, a lot of our listeners are involved in the dirt world. There are certain aspects as a general contractor and you're building all kinds of projects. You've got massive projects that you're doing all over the country. But I would imagine if I put myself in your shoes, there are a handful of elements to a project that can make or break you. Right. right. One of them being the site work. Absolutely. The site works. Number one, first How, and foremost. Why is that number one? How, why is the site work so important uh, to the construction process? Well, I mean, um, it, it impacts the progress of, of that building. You know, I mean, if, if you can get in front, if you can get in front of, of the, uh, of the site, you know, early on and, um, kind of give yourself a, a lane to, to have a staging area, to, um, divert water away from the building, to, um, to start foundation work and, and build, um, you know, to, to have uh, BMPs or erosion control protection so that you're not getting fines to, uh, um, you know, all the things that go with building a project. If you can get in front of, in, in front of those site activities, um, it, you can speed up the job so much. You can, you can avoid weather related delays. Um, you know, uh, but it's kind of forward thinking, you know, I mean, I, I tell people every day, spend the money on the site, you know, dump the lime if you need to dump the lime, you know, because you can't get those days back, you know, so. Um, How do you get in front of those things? Because you're right, that that site can make or break your schedule yeah. and your budget. Right. Yeah. From the very beginning, out of the gate. Yeah. So when you talk about getting in front of it, what does that look like? What do you mean? Well, I mean, if if we had to, if I had to do it, you know, my way on every project, I would probably, uh, during design development, um, and we've done this before, divert the grading and, and utility work away from the building uh, from a design development perspective. And we would, uh, you know, start, uh, you know, start procuring um, utility uh, uh, materials, you know, storm, storm structures, getting those all designed out. And, uh, and, and starting with that site, you know, as soon as we possibly can, um, barring weather conditions while, while maybe building design is getting permitted and stuff like that. And, you know, if you gotta, if you gotta adjust a few things on a site, you know, so be it. But, you know, if you can get in front of it, that, you know, that, that would be my personal, um, but it doesn't happen that way. I'm not, yeah. I'm not totally in control of you know, when projects come out and how they get timed. No, out. I'm so glad you say that so, because we, uh, we try to, we sing that song all the time that yeah. if you can lock arms with your site yeah. contractor early on, exactly, you yeah. can get ahead of this. Absolutely. And you Absolutely. know, so often yeah. that, that seems to be the thing that comes in right before they're ready mm -hmm. to go. Right. You yeah. know, now we're going to put this thing out for bid. We're going to find out who our contractor is mm -hmm. when, if you would have brought them alongside of you early on in the process, yeah. then you could have worked through these things and gotten ahead of a lot of those issues. And so yeah. I was glad to hear you say that we, yeah. We feel the same. We see that, but where does it break down for you guys? And you don't don't use any names. Uh, you don't have to name any contractors. But give me a, give us an example of where the site work and the site that relationship or the site development broke down for you. Well, um, and then, I, and I'll ask it. you too to give yeah. us one where it actually it actually yeah. helped make the project. Okay, um, I've got a. Um, I've got a project right now in Savannah, Georgia, um, at Hunter Army Airfield. It's a hangar building. Um, you know, there's there's nothing real complicated about about the building itself. It's a administrative building. It's a hangar. Um, you know, but uh, 
we really fell down and our site contractor fell down in managing the uh, uh, the storm sewer system for it and didn't procure materials and you know all along during uh, during planning we had anticipated getting getting the storm structure in and and the storm structure is significant it was uh, two uh, yeah, two 60 inch pipes um, that took on the water from the runway the the existing runway and and uh, so in other words taking on all that water before it gets to our building um, and, and we didn't get that in and uh, um, and then we're like well um, there's nothing stopping us from from built going ahead and building the building so that's what we did and uh, next thing you know we're we've got bypass pumps and we've got uh, um, wow. you know uh, all kinds of, of delays and uh, you know so so and your uh, airport project it's an airport military, project military. military for the army corps of engineers and and uh you know it's uh um part of it was um the timing um you know uh, uh the way that the government procures their their work um at that time there was hyperinflation going on in construction and so by the time we got awarded it course we had a, a bid bond on it and it, it was it's not a small project um you know 70 million or something like that wow and and so um you know we went forward with it and um obviously contracted with our our site contractor and and they didn't realize how fast material uh, was moving on them you know in terms of ordering structures and ordering pipe and 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 i think that that happened for them not just on our project because they're out of business now mm. um so it happened to them on, on a lot of projects you know and wow. so um, so that's, well you mentioned that yeah. and that's one of the benefits of coming in alongside of someone mm -hmm. early is securing yeah. those materials securing yeah. the yeah. materials that you're going to need to be able to to get that done so, so that's so that's uh well that feels painful <laughs> Uh, uh, it's all good. You, you learn from these experiences, yeah. you know, and, and I know that, uh, our team is learning, yeah. you know, it's, it's a hard lesson learned. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with writing that check to, uh, uh, for people to, to learn as long as they learn from it and, right. and we don't yeah. do it again. You only want you know, to write so. that check once. Yeah. 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 Once it's an expensive check. So, well, um, give us an example, the flip side of that, yeah. give us an example where having the right site contractor really made a difference for you. Well, I, um, I, I think with the work that, uh, that we've done with you all, um, you know, uh, I was not lobbing yeah. that up there so that you would <laughs> pat hoop high on the back. I did. That. No, uh, um, I, um, I think that you know the work that we've done with you all has been uh, um, has allowed us to get um, in front of the uh, construction early on. You know, especially uh, you all are uh, on on Gaston Commerce and and, and even on the Oaks Commerce um, uh, project. But um, uh, you know, um, some of the stuff that that was done early with regard to getting some of that storm sewer in place and then uh grading that site or um, we had positive drainage whenever uh, rains were coming in that's a big deal oh it's you huge know I mean? yeah. um, it's a big deal to you know take a day you know you got rain coming in take a day to get positive drainage going you know and uh you know set up the site for success you know um and unfortunately you know we've had you know a lot of site contractors that don't take that day to to create that positive drainage and it's hard to you know, recover from it's, that it's so hard to recover because it just saturates into the ground and you're you know and you're you're over excavating and you know writing a lot of a lot of time material tickets and you know <laughs> yeah so well start right finish yeah right absolutely yep. yeah. yeah and and start right <sighs> Get in front of it, yes. and yeah. and be proactive. Don't, right, be don't proactive. Yeah, be proactive, and and uh, um, and a lot of this stuff is, you know, I, um, it's kind of common knowledge, but for for some odd reason, you know, people sometimes put blinders on. And they're like, oh, I gotta, 
got to get this done today. I got to get this done today. And in reality, you know, them having to get that particular task done today may have set us back a week. Right. You know, <laughs> may not be the priority. Yeah. Right. right there. Yeah. Big picture. Yeah. So. So, Keith, so, so what's next? What's next for Pecker Construction? You guys, well, uh, you're in 28 states right now. Yeah. We're, we're plans in, to keep growing. Um, uh, you always got to continue growing. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got wonderful, we've been blessed with just wonderful people in the organization. So we're going through strategic planning right now for, um, uh, uh, this will be strategic planning for 25, 2025 through 2030. Um, and we should have that wrapped up. Our fiscal year is in September 30th. I'm hoping that we'll have that strategic plan wrapped up. Uh, by September 30th, but no later than the first quarter of, of 25. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and we're, we are, uh, you know, planning to, uh, um, you know, build a Southeast headquarters in Rock Hill. Um, so, um, I'll probably start to, you know, congratulations. Some, yeah. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. That's yeah, great. So that's, uh, uh, that'll be a big deal. It'll have a, um, full service, office along with a warehouse and maintenance uh maintenance equipment yard so uh, lock up with your site contractor early there you go there you go yeah <laughs> that's the plan so <laughs> keith that's great congratulate yeah, yeah, and i love your you. strategy and your approach to growth it hasn't been hey let's see let's see how we can color the map no, it's, no, it's it's where do our clients want to go exactly and yeah. how do we grow with them Right. I love yeah. that approach to it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Thank you're not you. having to yeah. go in and build it and find it. Right. You just right. you build the relationship, you do a good job and you grow with them. Take care of the relationships that you have first. Yeah. So <laughs> well, yeah. Keith, I, I'm a huge fan. I'm a huge Appreciate fan of that. yours and awesome. uh, your company, your team. You have a uh, you have a gift of leadership that I admire. You very, like I said earlier, you're very humble, but leadership's heavy. And, and I know that. And uh, you you shoulder a lot of things that your team will never know and yeah. they will never feel. Um, and but you do that with them in mind. I was I was reading the other day, Kirby Smart, uh, uh -huh. Georgia. He's got oh, a yeah. he talks about the cost of leadership. I don't yeah. have you ever heard that? He, he did that yeah. at uh, Media Day. OK, um, for the SEC. Uh, for Southeastern Conference Media Day last okay. year, and he talks about everybody knows the benefits of great leadership, but nobody talks about the cost right. of leadership. Right. And he said, and he named three of them. He said, one of them, you, you're going to have to make hard decisions that will negatively impact people you care about. Right. Number two, you're going to be disliked despite your best attempts to do the best for the most. And three, you will be misunderstood and won't always have the opportunity to defend yourself. And I thought, how true mm, is absolutely. that? Absolutely. Absolutely true. How true yeah. is that? And and you're in that position. But there's a lot of positives. That, there's a that, lot. Yeah. yeah. So, But there's a lot of weight, yeah. too. And yeah, I know that is. your team looks at all that you're doing, and they, they should be very proud to have a leader in place that um, that is guiding them well and keeping the main thing the main thing, protecting the culture that your dad started. So I'm sure if they're listening to this, yeah. that they're, they're proud to have you speaking on their behalf. So our, our pastor um, – uh, Dr. Terry Moore, um, he has a uh, a sermon called uh, "Keep the Main Thing the Main Thing," mm -hmm. uh, and it's a fantastic uh, sermon. But uh, whenever you said that, I had to I had to share that. That's actually the topic of his sermon: is uh, keep the main thing the main thing. And, so hard uh, to do too. It is, we it get is distracted very yeah. easily. Yeah, and and so, but we've got a we've got a great team. We've got great leadership. Um, you know, I've got. Uh, several uh vice presidents that are on a strategic planning committee with me and you know it's um everybody shares in that in that um uh, that weight of leadership you know so it's all good well so, congratulations yeah. congratulations on all the success that you're having and uh we are. We're glad to have you in the studio today. Appreciate you sharing a little bit of your story. I've got to go back and listen to that episode now. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you got to send awesome. me the link so that we can do that. But how okay. can people find out more about Pecker Construction? Well, they um, they can go to my LinkedIn. They can go to PeckerConstruction.com. Um, you know, we're uh, they can call in. Um, you know, so it's we're out there. You know, it's uh, we're not very hard to get a hold of and. 
if somebody wants to stop by my office, I usually take the time for, you know, uh, to meet with somebody. So um, happy to. So. Well, Keith, thank you so much. We enjoyed having you in, yep, in the studio you. and yeah. uh, being a part of the Give Us the Dirt podcast. Bam, awesome. bam, you got anything else? Man, we appreciate you coming, bud. It was, it was a good one. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you so much, Keith. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate being there. Thank you for digging in with us on this episode of Give Us the Dirt, powered by HGC. If you liked what you heard, make sure you leave us a rating and a review and subscribe now on our Apple, Spotify, or YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. To share feedback or suggest our next guest, visit our website at giveusthedirtpodcast.com.